Okay, so we talked about last time that Riemann sums is great for an approximation, but we want to now talk about using calculus and finding the area underneath any curve without having to do all of these rectangles. And that's what we're moving towards. This section is going to be a little weird because they're going to have you to use software to do it. And then it'll be like, well, how did they do that? So if I want to find this shaded area, notice how this is written, the integral from A to B, so that's my interval, underneath my derivative, my rate, and this dx is like the change in x, so that's the same thing, my delta x, that's just saying my width of my interval, which ultimately we're letting that go to zero. So if I want to estimate the area underneath this curve, how would I do that? Well, again, in this section, they have you do this with technology. You can, you can use pretty much, well, that was kind of crazy. You can use pretty much any technology that you want, okay? You don't have to use uh, what I have here, but I just found this one to be, eh, okay. And so this is a web page, Wolfram Alpha. Most of you know very well about it, right? You think us teachers don't know about it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter my function, which is 10x. So 10x and then times 3 to the negative x. And I can see on my graph I'm going from 0 to 3. Might be kind of hard to see, but from 0 to 3. And what this program does for you is it draws your graph and it gives you the area. So this 6.9671 is the area underneath this curve, which is underneath this derivative from 0 to 3. And that's your answer. And like I mentioned in this section, that's what they have you do. Go use a calculator to do it. Um, and then the next section, we'll figure out, well, how did they actually come up with this stuff? All right, and so moving right along, uh, swap this. Well, what if we have negative area? So when the rate is negative, because remember this is the graph of the derivative. If you're below the x-axis, then you would have a negative area. Well, it's the same area. All we have to do is we typically say area is positive, so we would just absolute value it. The only time this comes into trouble is what if we had a little bit above and a little bit below. Then the problem here is if we in graph it, we know this to absolute value this piece, we'd actually get this area minus that area. So if I went across the entire interval from 0 to 4, and that's what this is saying, Find the area underneath x cubed minus 7x squared plus 11x, again the change in x, from 0 to 4, I would get this value which is wrong because this is taking this area and then this negative area is being subtracted. But we actually need to absolute value this to add these. So how do you calculate area under graphs having both negative and positive? Find where the function equals 0. So you set the function equal to 0. You're finding where it crosses the x-axis. Use those zeros, those intercepts, to subdivide the domain. And then integrate, in other words, that one piece, the positive piece. Integrate the negative piece and absolute value the negative piece and add them together. So how do you find something like that value? Well, I just said you set this equal to 0 and then you solve for x. Well, sometimes that's not so easy. So i got another program for you. So if you go to desmos.com, this is a great program. Uh, they also have it for as an app for your phone, so that's what's so nice about it. And if I plug in my function x cubed minus 7x squared plus 11x, and you can also tell it that you want it to only go from, put my squiggly bracket, from 0 to 4. 
So all I'm looking at is this area from 0 to 4. Well, what I want to know is where does it hit the x-axis, and if I put my mouse there, see how I get the 2.382? So that's what I'm doing here is I'm finding this 2.382, I got a better value, and I'm subdividing the interval. So from 0 to 2.38, I find that area. And then from 2.38 to 4, I find this area, and I absolute value it, so I add the two areas together. So this is actually your total area. So the best thing to do is graph these right away, and as you can guess, I can't, I can't ask you anything like this on a test unless I show you the graph, so you know there's some negative area. And so the best thing to do on your homework is to graph these to make sure there's not negative area that you might have to subdivide your interval. How can you calculate area between curves? Notice we have this as my 4x minus x squared. I have the lower here. So what we're doing is we look to find where the two graphs intersect. And how do you do that? You set the functions equal to each other. Okay, and then you solve for your variable in this case actually x, and determine which graph. You have to know which graph is above the other one because that you will put in first. And so the area between the curves is the area of the top minus the area of the bottom. So once again, if I want to find this where they intersect, and I'm kind of too lazy, I don't really want to set them equal to each other, then I go back to Desmos and I do 4x minus x squared, and this is also between 0 and 4. I'm going to cheat and copy that. I'm going to add another expression, and this is going to be the 1 half x to the 3 halves power, and that's going to be between 0 and 4. And I'm trying to find this point where they intersect, and as you can see, I get the 3.12, which you'll see back here, so that's how I find the 3.12. So now how I find that area between the graphs, I go from 0 to that intersection point, but notice you have to be careful that you put which one is on top first, and that matters. So 4x minus x squared minus, also be careful if there was more than one term in this function, you put this in parentheses because you want to minus the entire piece. And so I get 5.906. How in the world did I get that? Well, I go back here to my Wolfram Alpha. I put in 4x minus x squared minus x to the 3 halves over 2. And from 0 to 4. And I put, oh, I'm sorry, not 0 to 4, 0 to my intersection, which was 3.12. And I calculate my area to get that 5.906. Okay, so this was that intersection where the two intersected, and it gives me that total area. So again, this section is just giving you, showing you that you are finding area underneath curves. I mean, that's what we're doing, or between curves. But we're doing it with technology, which you, of course, won't be doing that on the test, but at least gives you a little practice of how you can use technology. Then when you actually learn how to do these, you can check your answers with those same websites.